Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we are going to plant up these concrete containers. I have three of them and I've already planted up two of them and I thought I'd bring you along and share my planting with this one. So this whole concrete container plants in here is dedicated to my hummingbirds. Last year, I did not plant this plant and I planted salvia instead, but I sor sorely regretted not planting this plant because I don't li really love this orange color of this millionaire. However, the hummingbirds absolutely love this plant. So I decided to bring it back this year and bring it into my garden because no matter how beautiful this garden is with all the different colors of flowers, if you don't have hummingbirds in your life and you're not sitting on the porch in the morning drinking your coffee and watching these little hummingbirds enjoy all this nectar of this gorgeous plant right here, then you're missing out on life. So anyways, like I said, two years prior when I started this garden, I was introduced to this plant from Jenny at Creekside and she did a really lovely video with this familiar and the lemon coral seed on and that's the first year that I planted it and they were absolutely gorgeous. And then the year after that, I did the same. And then last year I did salvia in these pots, which the hummingbirds do love salvia, but not as much as they love this familiar. So anyways, like I said, all these plants that I have in this container right here are dedicated to my hummers. And this is gonna be my thriller that's gonna be in the container. And this plant will get 18 to 20 inches tall and it will fill out quite nicely. I'm gonna put two of these vermillionaires in each of the pot along with the diamond snow and some Silver Falls Dichondra so it will spill over so my containers will look nice as well. And then I'm bringing the hummingbirds to my pots with this gorgeous violet color of the Super Bells. And this one is the Black Current Punch. So let's talk about this vermillionaire first. So this is what the plant looks like. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of this orange color right here, but hummingbirds love it. They like this tubular shape so they can get their long tongue and beaks into this plant. And here's the plant tag. It is, the common name is called Cupshe. C-U-P-H-E-A, Cupshe hybrid. Sometimes it's also called a firecracker plant, but it is called the millionaire. And this one is from Proven Winners and I absolutely love Proven Winners. It is just like a bigger performance of a plant for me. So I will always get my hands on a Proven Winners plant if I can. But the habit is mounded. It blooms from planting to frost and it gets 18 to 20 inches tall. It says space it at 12 inches, but I've put at least four plants in this container before with something on the outer edge. So it, like the habit is just great. You can plant two, three, four of them together and still have a lovely combination. And then the water's normal, it takes full sun. Deadheading is not necessary on this. It says that it's drought tolerant. Of course, I have all of these containers on drip, this whole, this is my cottage bed. This is what I call my cottage bed and I call it my cottage bed because I have just lots of different things in here that are short, tall. These are my um, cryptomeras that are behind me and I have these so we could uh, have some privacy in this area. But yeah, and it says the care is really, really easy. So I'm gonna plant two of these in each, each container. Now, you might look at this container and think, she's already planted that up. I have not. So this is a really, if you're not sure like how to place your plants, you can just put this whole entire grande container that's in the pot and just place it in the area that you want and see if you like that look. So I have my two millionaires here and then I have my two diamond snows here I die Kendra Falls here. Do you see this little guy? I have a little friend here today that wants to come along and 
be in my video little gecko or lizard or whatever you call him he's right there he's just like what is she doing i'm trying to sign and she's like in my space and then i have the black current punch which is a super bells now i said prior in my videos that you super bells do not like to be in the ground they're not going to do well in the ground so put them in your containers but they are a they're a calipricoa they look like a petunia but they're not a petunia but this is called super bells black current punch it's from proven winners and look at that big vibrant color that you have right there so this is going to attract all the hummingbirds as well they're going to be like come see me i can see this really far away and this is the plant tag right here so this one doesn't get very tall six to twelve inches tall super bells black current punch it has a really hot pink outer edge and a deep black center i guess is what you would say i call that black a black center just the colors just super super vibrant it looks really good up against these concrete urns or even like i have a blue pot too and this will look absolutely gorgeous against a blue container as well so i have two of those on this flanking on this each side and then to bring in a lot of my yellow, I have the Super Bells yellow, and this is another Calipicoa plant as well. And this one is a new uh, variety for 2023, Super Bells yellow. And these ones are just teeny tiny little flowers on there, but you're con you can just see that it brings that big pop of sunshine to my containers as well. Love yellow in my garden. So I have a yellow there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants in this concrete container right here. If you can tell, I wanted to bring some height to this container. So I have it on some just regular concrete papers down there. So I'm going to take all these plants out. I already have a little bit of soil in here, but I need to still buff it off as well. You can see that I have it hooked up to drip right here. So I have this black tubing, which just runs me from A to B. This does not give me drip. It just gives me like I said, like I don't need drip in the bottom of the container here. So I, it's connected to my one half inch dripping at the bottom here. And then I have it tied in with a little coupler with the little hole punch. And then the drain hole is here at the bottom. So I have it running down and up. And then I have the black tubing and then I have another little coupler. And this is my drip tubing right here. I call this my copper tubing. It's really not copper actually I think some of the emitters do have some like little copper in there to help like for the water uh, what do you call it like whenever the water um, like the white deposits or whatever it helps prevent that from blocking up in that as well so this is where my drip tubing is is my favorite soil for all the containers it's from proven winners right here it just drains really well and I don't have any problems with it like sometimes like if things when it gets really wet or it gets too dry it just doesn't want to drain very well but this is like light and fluffy and my plants love the soil so proven winners has also like just done their homework with their plants and their soil and all their fertilizers, they work really well together. So if I have a secret, it's not because I truly have a secret, it's because that all the Proven Winter stuff truly does work well with each other. Let's top it off.
struggle bus here, aren't I? Okay, and when I talked about the soil, I also talked about the fertilizer. So this is the, the continuous release plant food that I like to put into all my containers when I do all my planting. And that's what that looks like there. It's got a little scooper inside. This is what it looks like. I'm just gonna put some of this continuous plant food in there. This will continually to give it food for three months. If you want more flowers, I still do this and I also will add each week the water soluble plant food as well and that's going to give me more blooms because some of these plants like they're heavy feeders especially the super petunias and tunias and super bells they're going to put out a lot of flowers so you still have to give them lots of food so i'm going to plant about three i have a millionaire first and I'm just going to squeeze this container until it comes out easy. And I'm going to plant these right smack in the middle. And I have three containers and I'll share at the very end all three containers with you. And I planted them all up the same. these together like I'm planting them as one plant right there. And then I'm going to put, that's my thriller, is the millionaire, and my spiller is going to be the Silver Falls Dichondra, and that is going to spill over my container. It'll just hang real pretty here. And I'm gonna put this on this side. So instead of planting it up straight up and down, I'm gonna plant it right on the side. It's a little spill out right like so. This is my diamond snow, so I'm using this more for an accent. This is a euphorbia. The diamond snow is mo more known for its uh, foliage than it is. It doesn't really flower. This white on here is just part of the leaves. It looks like it flowers, but it's not. Diamond snow. You can also have a diamond frost that looks a little bit more not as compound and a little bit more airy and then there's a diamond mountain that gets really big and that would go more into the landscape and that would get like three feet tall but this one's going to stay nice and compact at 12 to 18 inches and i'm going to plant it on its side as well Digging out a little hole for it to make some space. I have two of these. I'm going to do one here and one here. I'm going to put the Super Bells Black Current Punch. It gets also 6 to 12 inches tall. These like to be not to have wet feet. They like something that's going to drain really well, so that's why they're better suited for containers. And I'm also going to put this on its side as well. 
never heard of anybody putting stuff on its side before until I saw Laura with Garden Answer. I learned a lot from her and that's what she did. And it makes a lot of sense when you want it to hang over your container. Always start out with fresh soil as well. I never carry my soil over from year to year because these plants are using a lot. You want them to have some room for their roots to grow all the way down into the soil. And if you just use the prior soil that you used before, it's already depleted. You're just not gonna get the same performance out of these flowers if you do continue to use all your soil year after year after year. And then another tip is to not fill your containers up with anything. Don't fill them up with rocks. Don't fill them up with any kind of uh, water bottles or anything like that. You want like these roots to have a lot of room to be able to grow. And then all the soil is going to give them more moisture and just more room to grow as well. And then my last one is the Super Bells Yellow. that one in there. So these plants are in here pretty tight. All right, so I still have some roots showing. So I'm going to grab some of the soil and cover all the roots and then get it watered in. These are all the plant tags that I used today. And like I said, this Vermillionaire is specifically for my hummingbirds right here. They absolutely love that plant. And I sure do enjoy having these hummingbirds come to my garden. It is just an, an, it is just an absolute joy to have and see those, especially when I'm drinking my coffee in the morning. Just get a big kick out of having these hummingbirds so close to me and be able to see them in all their glory. I also have a, me. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you can see this way over here. I do have my own hummingbird feeder as well that I do supplement, but I try to give them as much nectar with natural flowers because I feel like they like that just as much. But I've just made my own solution here. So what I would do would be use one cup of just white sugar with four cups. So you just want to do a one to four ratio, right? So one cup of natural sugar to four cups of water and I'll boil that and then let it cool off and then I keep it into like a mason jar and then I'll have some for me for like for the next week or whatever but I can fit three feeders in here as well. So I've got one just for right now and then this little cute hummingbird swing right here. They actually do use this swing. It's kind of cool. So let me go over some tips with you, which I call it my secrets, but it's really not a secret because maybe it's just something that you just haven't heard before or just doesn't, you just don't know what to look for. Anyway, so like I said, number one is a great plant, is with the Proven Winners plant. So that's number one. Number two is the soil that you use. I like to use the Proven Winner soil and it does have, and you can see, continuous release plant food right here in the soil as well but you still want to give it more okay because this is going to last a little while but as soon as the heat starts to get hot here and the flowers are starting to produce some blooms and it's going to need more plant food so you want to add more of the release continuous release plant food which is right here and I already put some of that into that container and that's what it looks like, little granules. And this will continue to feed up for three months and then after three months, if you would like to add more, you can. But honestly, like on a weekly basis, I like to add this water-soluble plant food. This is just gonna give it more of a boost and will make these flowers grow 
and be more happy and produce lots of blooms. So that is like my super secret. Whenever I have all those super petunias in the very front of my house and everybody stops and like, how do you get like all these blooms? Well, this is, this right here is what does it. So this is the water soluble plant food. And it comes in two containers, but I just opened them all up and put all the bags inside and that's what it looks like right there. And it comes with the scoop. So you want to use one scoop of this per one gallon of water. So I have a two gallon here. I have a two gallon bucket right here. So I'm going to put two of these scoops in this two gallon bucket. If I had a one gallon bucket, then I would only put one scoop. And then I'm going to do this at least once a week. So there you go. So all this stuff, Proven Winners has already done their homework and they know like how to get the most performance out of these plants. And this is what you got to do. So it's worth it if you want pretty flowers. All right, now that I went over all my secrets and I got all these plants planted, then we're going to just water this in. And I do already have the water soluble fertilizer in this two gallon container here. And we're just gonna give this a really, really good soak. Now, as long as your container has drainage hose and you do not have to worry about overwatering anything because it will just drain right out. Another thing that I like to do is top dress this soil. So this soil is being exposed to the heat so you can either add some mulch on top if you like, but I really like the look of this Spanish moss on top. So I'm just gonna pull some of this Spanish moss out of the bag right here. And I'm just gonna fill in between all these plants. Just gives it a fresh, clean look as well. Plus it gives it added, added protection. This is natural. Take it and spread it apart more. Okay, so the only thing that I need to do, I have a landscape staple right here. <clears throat> And I'm going to attach my drip as well. So I'm going to take it and put it under all these plants right here. And then I'll just try to curl it up right, snake it into the middle of the plants here. And then you can just hold it down with the landscape staple. So these are the gorgeous flowers that I just planted with you. This is the diamond snow. This is the silver falls. This right here is the black currant punch. Look how beautiful that is. This right here is the vermilionaire that the hummingbirds absolutely love. They're gonna love this vibrant right here of this currant punch as well. And then the yellow, Super Bell's yellow. This is the, the other Super Bell's currant punch. And then you could see my drip that I have in here. And this was that moss that I added on top just to cover the soil to give it added moisture. So look how gorgeous that is gonna be. And I'm gonna be so happy to see the hummingbirds as well into my garden. They also love this wadula right here. Of course, this is another tubular structure that they absolutely love as well. 
this is Juan and Roses, and it is showing off all in its glory as well. And then let's pan around. This is the cottage garden, like I told you earlier. And this is container number two that I planted up the exact same way. So this one has been in here for a couple of days and it's finally getting some sun from all that rain that we had. So it's gonna be happy. And then the other container is down here. You can hear my chimes. I'm chiming. So same thing with the diamond snow. You would think that that is a flower, but it's not. It's just a leaf. Isn't that crazy? And then the Dicandra Falls, Silver Falls, it's just going to like be my my trailer. It's going to spill over. And then of course I kept all my tags right here in this container. So if I get like confused about what I planted, at least I can share with you guys right there. And then I do want to share with you and I haven't been able to share with you just yet is my lavender tree. So this was the lavender tree that I planted last fall and look, I got gorgeous blooms on it right there. Some of the blooms have already fallen off. So I wanted to come and share with you how gorgeous this plant is right there. And then right in front of it is this candy corn. She's looking really, really pretty. And I have a little Viola that decided to plant on the ground there. And this is the Walker's Low and the Salvia is all in bloom right now. And I'm trying to see, I did have from last year, all of this Columbine looks really great. When I'm sitting on the porch, like this really does bring me some happiness. This Columbine, it's really, really pretty. You can see like when I move back, look how just sweet that little plant looks right there. And then this one is new this year, this foxglove. It's about ready to come out in buds. And then I'm not sure if that is a bubble gum that I planted last year or the jazzberry. I'm thinking it's the bubble gum, but that came back from last year. Look, don't pull up your super tunias. You may get more years out of them. And then you could see where the salvia and the sedum is mixing really well there together. It looks pretty. I'm so excited about the sedum that came up this year. And then these were all the bulbs that I planted in the spring that are trying to die back. And my magnolia is getting some buds on it. And I'm thinking, let's see, what else do we have in this garden that looks good right now? This is the hanging basket that I already did a video on that I shared with you guys. All these different type of purples that were in there. You can see my drip here as well. And the cat's pajamas is looking really, really good. Look at these sweet blooms. So I have several cat's pajamas. They're looking great. I have at least three of them right here. 
one down there. And my roses are all looking really good. I've managed to keep all the deer off of them thus so far. And I'm starting to get some buds. So while I'm not careful, the deer will come and eat all this new foliage right here. And then that's where you're gonna get your buds from. And then it's like completely gone. So that's Olivia Alston, uh, Celebration, Jubilee Celebration. And then I have another, uh, another one here that's the Olivia. And then on my trellis that's growing, right here I have my climbing rose, the Sh Shrod Fire, Shrod Shire. Can't never say that word. Rose, I'll put the name of it up on the screen for you. And look at this clematis, it's gone crazy. I should have tried to tie it up a little bit better before it got all mangled together. Well, there's another view of the cat's pajamas. Look how pretty that is. Bees are gonna be all over this. And then there is the clematis that's about ready to be in bloom. You can see those are where all the blooms are gonna come from. And I have some daylilies down here. The deer already got them once, so we'll see if they bloom. And then this is the rose that's over here. have the Rose of Sharon are all budding out. They look really good. And then you could see the creeping flocks back here. It's not creeping, it's tall flocks. It's already in bloom. Looking really, really pretty. This just keeps getting more mounded and mounded each year. It really is pretty. Have another clump up here. Right there. Still need to prune my butterfly bushes. I haven't done that yet. Out of all the pruning that I've done and all the videos that I've shared with you, still have pruning to do. It's hard to believe, huh? This one hasn't been pruned yet. But before I go, I got one more thing to share with you. Look at these gorgeous allions. Look how pretty that is. I bought 25, these did not do good in the pot, so I will not waste my money and not put them in the pots ever again. But they did really good in the ground. He's about ready to pop out in their little spherical. All right, all right, friends, so I hope this video was helpful. I hope this gave you some inspiration to go out and buy some gorgeous concrete containers and fill them with some gorgeous plants. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.